In this video, we're gonna help my buddy Thomas Frank with his website. Let's get into it. Hi Thomas, how are you? You're Thomas Frank, I'm Matt Givanese. Welcome, today we're gonna talk about Thomas's website and he asked me to look at both SEO, page speed, and some sales page stuff. So we're gonna go into SEO, page speed, and monetization. And speaking of all of those things, I have courses on all three that you can find at moneylab.co slash courses. And if you use the promo code video, you can get 20% off. Yay. Okay. Let's take a look at Thomas's website from an SEO perspective. So I pulled up Thomas's website with Ahrefs, which is the tool that I use for SEO. If you want to get it, um, it is moneylab.co slash Ahrefs, and that's A-H-R-E-F-S, Ahrefs. That is actually how you say that. So. Uh, let's, he's, I know he was having problem, like what keywords to go after. So let's see what keywords he's already ranking for. Um, if we go to organic keywords, I think most of what he's trying to go after is notion based keywords that, that, that plugin or that plugin, that software. So obviously he's ranking for Thomas Frank. Uh, <laughs> where do we, where do we rank position number two, Thomas, I'm sure it's like YouTube or something. Uh, Notion API, that's number five. Best extensions, Chrome, Rich Mindset, Notion Recurring Test. So let me just read what you wrote here because you wrote, uh, SEO is my top problem and I don't know if I should target the same keywords both with template pages and tutorial pages or try to make them target different ones. Sp okay, so in that case, you have Notion templates, which is which are your content, I guess, to get the template and then you have tutorials on the you know how to use the template i'm assuming that that's how this works so let's just look at get the template for free and that's going to take us to the template page i'm assuming and this seems like a tutorial but let's look at uh, notion tips so notion tips are different things so okay here's what i'm going to say if it were me, I would I would be targeting the how to. Like I would be using the how to because the how to is the free information that's going to sell if that's what you what you're doing, your templates. So I believe that the that the that forget the template uh pages. Build out content that is going to help people use Notion cuz I think part of the problem or at least part of like what I think would be the thing is that you're Thomas, right? So you just have this site that's sort of like a personal brand and you teach different things, but specifically you're trying to like sell things that have to do with Notion. And I'm assuming that a lot of people who like you, because again, I just want to point out, if you don't know who Thomas is, Thomas is a huge YouTuber with over 2.3 million subscribers. And if you want to learn anything about anything, Thomas's channel is where you need to go please subscribe to Thomas's channel. So Thomas, huge YouTuber, people know who he is and he's teaching how to use Notion. So I think a lot of people are coming to your website, but maybe they're not sold on Notion. Maybe they're using something else or nothing at all. And so nothing at all. Maybe you have to actually, uh, you know, sell them on Notion. So I think it should be tutorial first. And then I think you need to come up with a good way to bake in your templates into the content, which I'm sure you're doing. Um, so I'm not, so like, I wouldn't be conflicted with those two things. And I think because like, if it were Money Lab in this case, yeah, I'm not necessarily trying to rank for any individual course that I sell or any individual resource that I sell. I'd much rather, unless they were completely different and I was, ne and I was never gonna do a, a, a tutorial for my template. So let's take an example. Um, I have a, I have a template, like a spreadsheet template that I give away for free on 
how to use the whole profit first model with business. But I don't want to rank for profit first, if that's we, if that's my target keyword, on the page where you just download the template. Yes, that's going to get me email subscribers, but I'd much rather kind of tell my story and show my work, and then that leads into downloading the template. And so if I'm going to try to rank for profit first, then I'm going to go after it with a you know, an email or sorry, a blog post that is a tutorial that I can beef up and really make great. In your case, I would look at something like ClearScope. So ClearScope, I don't, you know, I don't have an affiliate with it. Um, there's different ones. There's also, uh, I think Market Muse is another one, Rank IQ. Basically, these tools are using AI. And I know some people have asked me to do a tutorial on this, and I absolutely will. But basically, it allows you to like, plug in your target keyword and make sure that you're competing in your page and in your, you know, with your um, tutorial text with the rest of the internet. And so that way you can rank for those things. So I think from a what to choose, choose tutorial, choose long form over just a template page. Um, but you might have an issue where uh, you are conflicting and I will say this. So let's say like, okay, well, I already have a template page. It's up. It's on my website. And then I also have this tutorial. So they're kind of already both going after the same keyword. So what do you do in that case? I don't think you do anything. I think you just put more weight behind the tutorial and you leave it be. Now, I know that there's like some recent Google update that was basically like leveling the playing field. So as a creator, if you're like the Notion person, you're the only person who's ever talked about Notion besides Notion, right? You would, and you, know, you can see this in YouTube. YouTube, I don't think has this rule because I can see it with Swim University. But like if you rank for a keyword, you can have like multiple posts rank for a keyword on the first, you know, in the first like three. So like, you know, I could dominate the SERPs in YouTube, but I believe in certain cases, you can't really do that in Google, right? So Google's gonna favor one over the other and they're gonna give, you know, cause I guess they're constantly testing see, to see like where to click, uh, who's clicking and, and like which content is keeping people in track. So like, or keeping people like, people are getting what they want, the relevant information. That's what I'm trying to say. So you're only one's gonna rank. Pick the one, put the weight on it, and don't worry about if you're targeting the same keyword for two different posts because it's okay. Perhaps you go after a cousin keyword, right? You go after something that's like a little more, so like for the template page, maybe you go after a longer keyword that's like way more specific in meaning that let's say somebody just wants to learn, what's, what's this one? How to create multi-column layouts in Notion, right? So let's say that that's like the, you know, create multi-column or multi-column layouts in Notion is probably a keyword, okay? So that is what you're, you're creating a how-to guide and in this how-to guide, you're gonna have a template for your multi-column layout, right? That's what you're, that's kind of the deal here. And maybe this example isn't specifically that, but that's what you're doing. So in this case, I would say multi-column layouts in Notion is your target big ass primary keyword. Go after it hard with this how-to post. But maybe there's a secondary, you might not see this in HRS because it might be so specific that there's no data for it. But it might be a multi-column layout notion template. Super long keyword, but your template page ranks for that long phrase keyword, right? That long tail. And what's great about that is the people who are searching that specific thing are going to see your downloadable template and they are the ideal candidate for that, for clicking that and downloading it like hands down. So I think maybe you go after big ass, you know, shoot for the moon sort of like keywords with your tutorials and then go longer tail with your 
templates that are more specific, you know, more action intent keywords. Okay. Instead of like just learning intent keywords. So let's, uh, you know, I think that there's probably a ton you could go after. I'm not going to pull it up here, but you could probably type in the word notion in the keywords explorer and just, and this is what I would do. This is how I would do keyword research. Right. And actually, you know what, let me just show you. So let's go to the keywords explorer. Let's type in notion. And you can also do it for YouTube as well. Like notion <laughs> is, is well, thankfully the word notion they're ranking number one for it. So that's good. Um, that means that Google knows and when someone types in the word notion, they're looking for this software. So what I do is I go into matching terms, right? I will sometimes, depending on how difficult it is, I will set my keyword difficulty at a max of about, let's call it 25, right? Boom. Then I will say, I don't really care about the volume. I'll sort by keyword difficulty. And in fact, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sort by volume, right? So then you have notion, meaning great notion. That's a brewery, um, notion synonym. And I literally go down like this. I go down this list and I'm like notion API. Okay. Add that to my keyword list. Okay. Keep going. Notion templates aesthetic. Click that. Add it to a list because you just have to sit here and look for things that pertain to what, you know, you know, the industry. So you're looking around, you know, obviously Notion careers, no. Notion widgets, are widgets a part of Notion? I actually have, don't know, but I'm assuming they do. How to use Notion. See, we're still, you know, under 25, which is good. Notion templates for students. That sounds right up your alley. Notion for Mac. Aesthetic Notion templates, Notion versus Evernote, Notion dark mode. It's a ton, ton of keywords here to rank for. So yeah, there's just, just knock them out, you know? And even if they're, you know, the, the content's thin, these are simple keywords. These are really, really low difficulty, very, very high volume. That's the move right there. Let's move on to page speed. to run this. Oh no, I did run it. Here it is. Yeah. So, uh, I ran your templates page, um, which you said was your most popular page. That's why I ran it. It looks like your speed is crap, but, uh, you do pass all your core web vitals. Okay. And I did look at this briefly before jumping on. Um, and I definitely know what you can do. Now you're on WordPress with this site. I know that. And you have eliminate render blocking resources. Now I think you said that you have done all the tricks. You've tried all the tricks, uh, perf matters, Cloudflare. I don't even know what this is. Cloudflare to the max, Imageify, GIFs turn into compressed MP4s. Okay, I'll tell you this. Cloudflare, great, right? Imageify, this is gonna be not going to really add to your, I mean, it's, it's good that you're compressing images, but it's, if you're, it's like the biggest bang for your buck, isn't going to come from image compression. It's going to come from lazy loading images and videos. So just looking at this, it looks like it well, is lazy there. loaded. So that's good. Um, I can't tell if these images are, but they are also MP4s, but let's inspect the code real quick. Nope, not that one. Let's do page source. I just want to see if you are using. All right, let's just search real quick. WP Rocket. Let's just type in Rocket. Rocket Loader with Cloudflare. That's which is good. Um, so you're not using WP Rocket. If you want the biggest bang for your buck as far as page speed is concerned, install WP Rocket, and you can find it. And I please moneylab.co slash WP rocket. And I better find out if it's WP dash rocket or WP rocket. Either way, try real hard and <laughs> buy WP rocket. It's cheap. You know, you can buy, I think for like 40 to 50 bucks for the whole year. And what that's going to do is you have all of these things that like you can fix, right? So you have eliminate render blocking resources, literally two check boxes in WP rocket will fix this problem, right? So you have all of your CSS loading at the top and that's not good. 
you're also loading uh, multiple versions of the same CSS file. And it looks like this is from Elementor. Elementor, <sighs> I know, frameworks on top of frameworks. You know what I'm gonna say, not a huge fan, right? But let's, you're already in it, so, you know. And this is why I'm not a, a fan, because they're literally loading two different, ver two versions of their same code. <laughs> so why? Because one has a little tiny line of code and this other one has another little tiny line of code, but together it's redundant. So here we are. Um, you're also using Font Awesome 5. Huge fan of Font Awesome. I'm on the record saying huge fan of Font Awesome, but when you're loading the entire library of Font Awesome, including solid, regular, thin brands, like all of these, uh, you know, fonts, it just takes forever. It's like a huge, huge file. Um, and it's great that you're loading it from your own server, but it's just so much. What I would do in this case, if you can, if you like absolutely have to use icons if you absolutely have to use font icons not just icons but font icons right we know the difference an icon can just be an svg file which loads lightning fast right but if you have to load it as a font you're loading the waf 2 and all the other icons that go with it so in this case i would actually just use something like icon moon which allows you to pick and choose the icons that you want to use and it builds you a css file that will only contain the icons that your site actually uses and not load all the other ones. Or if you're like me, get rid of them all. <laughs> it's just not worth it. I do love Font Awesome. I literally download SVGs and use them in design all the time. I think it's I think it's great. So I would also like I would also argue that, and again, still going on Font Awesome, like we like it design wise. But like most people don't care, you know, or they won't even know it was gone. They're like, hey, what happened to your icons? No one cares. Um, so the other thing is you're using Typekit. I believe that's Adobe, right? So you're loading, you're loading a font from another server, someone else's server. That takes forever. Um, Cloudflare, yes, is caching some stuff, but like it's not. So what you can do here is download the font, get the WAF2 file right? And add it into your CSS, load it and preload it with WP Rocket. You could preload the WAF, right? <laughs> WAF 2, which is probably all you need, WAF and WAF 2. Um, preload that with WP Rocket, you know, have a fonts folder in your theme and you can still get the use of your font, but it'll be super fast and it won't be relying on Adobe server to download it. Um, or use web safe fonts like me, but I get it. Uh, it looks like, yes, properly sized images. <sighs> I have this issue too. And I think there's no way around it. I don't, I don't, well, there is a way around it. It's just like a pain in my ass and I'm not going to do it. Um, lazy loading would help this. So, uh, what I would do w install WP rocket again, it's like WP rocket has a free version of just like lazy loading images. But in this case, just get WP Rocket. It solves so many problems. It's like, it's honestly one of the things that like, it's like the secret, it's like, it is the magic bullet for page speed. And, you know, a lot of um, WordPress hosting companies were like, you know, they're not cool with like caching plugins. Most of them, if not all of them are cool with WP Rocket. So it's it's the way to go. And it's, it's really not for, uh, it's like, I do use it for caching, but it's like that deferred stuff. It like defers CSS, it defers JavaScript. Um, and maybe you're, you know, I, I know you're not using it, but you know, the lazy loading, the, all that stuff is like kind of taken care of. It's really, it's really nice. There's also like a lot of backend stuff that it does. Um, but those are the biggest bangs for your buck. Okay. So reduced unused CSS this and see fun. Awesome is in here. This is the problem with, um, you know, theme builders like Elementor is that like, I don't know, they just have unused CSS because maybe some, you know, dumb dumb from before is using like an old version and they have to like accommodate all their customers. I don't know how it works, but probably that. Um, there you go. That's kind of the problem with Elementor. But again, you could, you know, it's not. So this is not going to like, you know, 
Uh, I don't think WP Rocket does unused CSS, although it would be awesome if they did. But you could get rid of this by adding some lines of code into your functions.php file. And I, you know, if you're interested in this, I do have snippets for some of this stuff, not all of it, but some of this stuff where you can de enqueue, meaning like you're removing the unused CSS in your functions.php file using a PHP function as opposed to trying to find it and deleting it from like the Elementor plugin. You can do it with your theme. It When it, the theme loads, it'll just like pull it out of the header, right? Um, if you want that, moneylab.co slash page speed, that's my page speed course. There's a ton of code snippets in there. That's all about, um, you know, doing these, these sorts of things. And I can also see the block library that you're not using. So I'm assuming you're not on the Gutenberg editor and you're on the classic editor if I see that. Could be wrong, but either way, you can remove that library. And I do have a code snippet for that in that course. Um, and if you use the promo code video, you get 20% off. <sighs> I don't, you know, next gen formats, lazy load it and it won't, you know, it's JPEG, it's cool. It's probably already pretty low. So that'll help your page speed, like, really? WP Rocket, man. Um, okay, last but not least, and I'm gonna take some time on this video because there's a lot to talk about here. We're gonna talk about monetization. So um, I would love the SEO and speed suggestions, which we just talked about, but would also love to know how I can improve the effectiveness of a sales page for my main product, and that is uh, creator's companion. Now I looked at this page actually when you first, uh, submitted the form for this video and kind of love it. You know, <laughs> I don't, you know, design wise, I love it. I mean, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can improve this, but I don't know if it's through design. Um, it might be through some copy. So we'll maybe talk about that, but just, just, just show everyone this page is sick. It's so well done. Um, I think you really can't go. I mean, this is, I mean, again, I, I just want to show people how good this is um, because this is exactly how you build a sales page. What you could do is you could change some copy and make it a little more specific. So, Manage your entire content creation process in Notion. Who is gonna benefit from this? Are we talking about YouTubers? Are we talking about bloggers? They are a very different group of people. Um, and I see here it's YouTube videos, blog posts, podcast episodes, and more. So you are targeting a large group of people and they all speak different languages. This is something that I would recommend that you take a look at Brendan Dunn's content in general. Um, I believe he's now, uh, most of his content's over at createandsell.co and writemessage.com, which is his software. What I think he does really well, and I think this sales page could do really well with, is sort of knowing who your customer is, like knowing the type of person who is getting your Notion templates, right? finding out if they are a podcaster, blogger, or YouTuber. Now, if they're all three, they're probably they're probably a YouTuber, or like you could ask them what their preferred platform is or where their biggest audience lies, right? So that way, at least you know you're speaking the right language. Once you find out that information via email, now you have that, and then when they visit the sales page, you could change copy to speak to just some, to just like a YouTube workflow or just a podcasting workflow, or just a blog writing workflow. This is, I think, why my original product, Asana for bloggers, which is, you know, you're talking about Notion, I talk about Asana, but the word for bloggers is what sells Asana, right? It's what sells that course, because it's, it's I'm qualifying it with who this is for, right? So it just weeds out everybody, and it's like, yeah, I'm teaching you how to do a blog editorial calendar with Asana in my case. So I think that's one way to do it. But honestly, the way that you're going to, I don't think the sales page other than that can, you know, and maybe just some like, 
more descriptive headlines, you know, stop juggling tools, list out those tools. Maybe you hit one, right? You know, stop juggling tool, you know, this kind of tool, that kind of tool, this kind of tool, that kind of tool. And it's like, oh, it's overwhelmed. Yeah, you're right. I don't want all those things. You know, it's like for me, it would be like, stop juggling Asana with Google Sheets and something else. I think the only two I use, but there you go. Like that's that, you know, make maybe um, be more specific in your headlines. I think, uh, you know, this doesn't really matter. I think. Yeah, you, you talk about yourself. This is all good stuff. Um, I think the real the real way that this works is, and I and this is something that I did earlier in this this year, and I'm gonna thank Miles Beckler for helping me out with this. And you can check out Miles Beckler too at his YouTube channel and milesbeckler.com. But the thing that helped me out the most was really focusing on collecting email addresses and then pitching them my courses. Uh, as opposed to just like trying to shove this in their face. Now, my uh, sales page, when you just kind of visit it, like you kind of find it through, you know, you're, you're reading a blog post and I just have like an ad for it, maybe some lead-in copy on a blog post. Like, you know, I'm talking about, you know, in my case, I'm talking about pool algae. And then I'm just like, hey, if you're still struggling with pool algae, sales cadence, uh, you know, go, go with this product. And then, you know, that gets a decent conversion rate, but it gets a much better conversion rate. And for obvious reasons, when someone subscribes and I send them to a one-time offer page for the same course, and I offer it at a, you know, temporary 24 hour discount, you know, a real actual deadline use, I use deadline funnel for that. So yeah. Um, I think that that would just help sell it. I don't think there's much you can really do with the sales page. You know, um, you made a great sales page. So, you know, again, if I were going to do anything, I would improve the headlines and make them a bit more descriptive and, and less like trying to be short and to the, you know, cause I, I totally fall into that trap all the time, but you know, instead of, for example, instead of capture every idea, it's like capture every idea for a blog post, upcoming YouTube video, you know, just be more specific. Identify winning topics, you know, these are these are great, but they can just be a little bit more descriptive. I don't think that's gonna like, I don't think that that's gonna move the needle much. I mean, copy does move the needle a lot, but I think the real bang for your buck scenario is to focus on email collection first and foremost, and then, send them to this page, pitch this product over and over again in every single email, every single helpful email you send out to your list could have a nice little soft pitch at the bottom. And every single, you know, every once in a while, you know, maybe you pitch them really hard when they first subscribe, maybe 21 days later after they've gotten some of your content and some soft pitches, maybe you go hard on another sale you know, maybe you have it trigger where if everyone's open, you know, you on the most engaged subscriber, then you're like, you know, there's this like technique that, you know, you could just say, hey, this subscriber is open to every single email. They really want my help. Let me literally put them into an, an email automation. that's like, hey, I know you need help. I give you a shortcut. Here's my product. So that's what I would do. <sighs> I just need to calm down a bit. I just get very excited about this stuff. And if you're like me and you get very excited, check out moneylab.co and check out my courses on SEO, page speed, and monetization all at moneylab.co slash courses. If you like this video and you want more videos like this, please help me keep going by clicking the like button, by hitting the subscribe button, and if I missed anything, if there was any glaring errors in this video that you saw and you're like, oh, you, but you didn't talk about that, leave a comment. And just leave a comment to say hi. I'm, I'm in the comments. I'm saying hello. So that's it. And uh, I guess I'll, uh, I'll see you in the future. Bye.